Hello, Hattrix fans, and welcome to a playoff edition of Catching Up with McQuarrie. I'm Hattrix broadcaster Doug Latuka, alongside Hattrix head coach and general manager Billy McQuarrie. Coach, the time is now. We are finally at the playoffs, 56 regular season games in the rearview mirror. You've got a three-game series with Motor City coming up. Could be shorter than that, could go all three. How was practice this week ahead of playoffs? Uh, it's been great. The energy's uh, fantastic, probably the best we've seen all year. Guys are really focused in and excited for the opportunity. Right now, where do you believe your team is mentally, physically, going into round one of the playoffs? I think we're in a really good spot. I mean, um, we're we're still recovering from a little bit of injury, but you know that's why we've worked on our depth throughout the course of the season, and really believe in the guys that have um, have the opportunity here this weekend. And I think mentally, we're probably in the best spot we've been in all year. Guys understand the task at hand. Uh, you know, we've been put through kind of the ringer here this year, and. You know, playoff hockey game one is going to be no different than, you know, last game here last weekend. So, you know, we're certainly ready for the opportunity. Just excited to get started. Seems like we've spoken about the mindset of flipping the page on last year and moving forward to this year. But now that you're back in the playoffs, does the mindset and the thoughts from last year about the process and how you can get through the grind of the playoffs come back? Is it very similar process or does it change team by team? Uh, I mean, it's always a different year, but, but what you can do as an individual is just ch take the opportunity that, that you've had in the past and, and apply that, mm -hmm. you know, in the current situation. So, uh, you know, I, I know for me when I was a player, it was, it was an honor to just be in the playoffs and you try to take bits of information from those situations throughout the course of your career and apply them to where you are in that moment. and. You know, I think certainly for the guys that, that had that experience last year, they can, they can take away uh, you know, some positives uh, from that experience mm -hmm. and they can learn from some of the things that they need to learn from. And, um, you know, but it's going to be a different year. It's going to be a different grind. It's going to be a different challenge. You've had some pretty stellar rookies this year. Rookie of the year for the Hattricks, Corey Cunningham, second on the team in goals. Connor McCollum was among the league leaders in wins in the net for you guys. But... In the playoffs, it tends to be the veterans that you lean on. You've got champions in that locker room from last year and from around the league. How heavily do you rely on those guys, the vets, to carry the load, especially early on in the playoffs until the rookies get acclimated to the situation? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't think we're really going to change much. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've relied on our young players all year, and, and that's something that we're going to continue to do. Obviously, we rely on our veterans and the guys that have been in those situations before. Um, you know, but but not to not to try to replicate last year. But you know, if you look at the team we had in the playoffs, uh, you know, we had a lot of young guys stepping up mm -hmm. in some big in some big areas. So. You know, we foresee the same kind of um, March here, you know, this year where we're going to rely on, on everybody for sure. Do you feel that, like you have an advantage going into this playoffs, considering you won last year, you brought back a nice number of guys, some who were in the bottom six last year have actually stepped up into the top six. Do you feel like you, your team is in a better spot than some others in the league, just based on experience and what you guys did last year? I don't know if we're in a in a better spot. I think we're in a really good spot, mm -hmm. and I, I like where we are. Um, but you know, the, the all the teams that are in the playoffs now have, have earned the right to be here. And you know, if, if there's anything to learn throughout the course of the regular season, it's anybody can beat anybody. So you know, we have to show up and and play our game. And you know, the guys that are playing, the guys that are mentally strong, those are the guys that are going to help us get through the times that that we need to get through here in the next three weeks. Had a bit of a lull at the end of the year, three losses in the final four when you guys were going for that number two seed, trying to hop Motor City and take that two seed. Did you see any changes of feelings after a couple of losses when you didn't get that two seed or was it, all right, let's flip the page. We knew we were playing the Rockers for about a month at this point. Let's just go after it. Yeah, I mean, there's really no, like, obviously, we'd love to be at home, and, you know, we, we enjoy putting on a show in front of our fans, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, we also have a job to do, and, and our job is to win one game at home and one game on the road, and, uh, you know, I think if you look at uh, where we are, you know, I'd, I'd rather be in our situation here. Yeah. 
uh, you know, Motor City has to drive 12 hours out here, uh, you know, today, play yeah. a game tomorrow, then they have to drive 12 hours home and, and play a game two. You know, we just have that 12 hour drive for game two. And, you know, if we take care of our home ice, we give ourselves a mm -hmm. you know, tremendous opportunity to, uh, you know, put ourselves in a situation that we want to be in. Well, Columbus just did it last night. Not quite a 12 hour ride for them, but they took care of business against Mississippi in their game one as the better seed traveling to the lower seed for that game one, how things work in the FPHL. Moving forward for you guys in net. Brought in Taylor Joseph at the trade deadline. Connor McCollum, we've spoken about his numbers all year. He's been the starting goaltender for the majority. Joseph has come in and played a decent amount of games and was outstanding last year in the playoffs against you guys. Do you have a plan for the playoff goaltending or is it still up in the air? Uh, well, our plan when Tijo came into the fold was kind of just uh, get into a little bit of a rotation mm -hmm. and you know really trust in our two goaltenders and, and help in their development and their process and you know MC played a lot of hockey for us throughout the course of the year so we wanted to you know give him a little bit of rest heading into the postseason and you know I think the way the the rotation is working out you know MC will get game one and uh, you know he's he's been phenomenal all year um, you know he's been the backbone for us defensively all season long and he's certainly earned that opportunity so we're very confident in what he's going to do and then we'll have to make some decisions from there. Connor McCollum, one of the rookie all-stars in the FPHL for the Empire Division. So he will get game one, and we'll see what happens moving forward with Joseph in game two and potentially game three. Games two and game three will be in uh, Michigan, and then game one here in Danbury. We shift to the Motor City squad. You've only seen them twice, and that was early in December. We've touched on 2023 compared to 2024 in terms of the roster, how you guys played once the calendar flipped and you really turned it on. What are some of the advantages of playing a team in round one of the playoffs that you didn't really see too much in the regular campaign? Well, I think you just have to focus on you know, your game, right? Like you don't have to, it's, it's not like we're playing a, game, uh, a team that we've seen 19 times mm -hmm. and you just know exactly what they're doing. So, you know, you need to focus on your game and you want to execute your game plan uh, better than they want to execute their game mm -hmm. plan. And, you know, for game one being in our house, I think, you know, we should be able to provide more energy, more physicality. Uh, and if we can execute our game plan a little bit better than theirs, you know, we're giving ourselves a good job good chance to win game one you know and, and go into game two in a really good spot what does the preparation look like against the team that you haven't played much compared to maybe a Binghamton squad that you saw 18 times yeah well we've done more video this week than we have in the past usually you know I would say it's in the regular season you're doing video one or two times throughout the course of the week uh, you know this this week we've done it probably three times mm -hmm. um, you know just trying to touch on you know, different aspects of the game and getting our guys familiar with, you know, their team, the way they want to play, the structure that they're looking to play within, uh, you know, also getting a look at the rink and their facility. You know, mm -hmm. we haven't we haven't had that opportunity to, um, you know, go there and, and feel what it's like to, to play on their ice. And they've had that opportunity here in Danbury. So mm -hmm. trying to find any edge that we can, um, you know, to, to replicate what we're going to see uh, you know, when we get to Motor City and, you know, we've even gone so far as to kind of, um, you know, we went out and got a set of different gloves. So, you know, our, one of our goalies is catching righty and he's got a lefty in his blocker <laughs> hand. And, you know, we envision Babin's going to be starting for them game one. And we want to be familiar with what we're seeing. So it's just all little tweaks that uh, we get to have some fun with throughout the course of the week. And I think we're ready to go. Yeah, Motor City, just in the second year of operation with their franchise, you guys played them four times last year. You won all four games, including two at Big Boy Arena. In terms of Dan Berry's hockey history in the FPHL, FHL, 14 seasons of the FPHL, 10 years there's been a Dan based franchise, and in five of those seasons, a Dan based franchise has made it to the finals. What does that say about hockey in Danbury and how relevant Danbury franchises are when it comes to the postseason? Well, I mean, if you look at the if you look at the game of hockey, I mean, it's it's played off of passion, it's mm -hmm. played played off of physicality and, and skill and 
and will and all those things. And I, I think to play in Danbury, you just have to embody you yeah. know, what it what it takes to play playoff hockey. And what I'm so proud of this group is, you know, these guys commit to playing playoff hockey for 56 games. And you look at other teams around the league and yeah, maybe they'll play 12, 15, 20, 25 games. But, you know, our guys really put it on the line, you know, absolutely every day. And it's uh, it's an honor, you know, to do that with them and just really excited to see what they're going to do here in the real season. Team awards were announced last Friday during the regular season finale. Johnny Ruiz, a three-time winner now for the MVP, Offensive Player of the Year. You had Corey Cunningham, Rookie of the Year. Out of the names that won the awards, who were some of those players that you saw grow the most throughout the year or you saw had the most impact on the team throughout the year, whether it was the locker room, on the ice, off the ice, whatever it may be? I mean, you can really touch on all of them mm -hmm. in, in some way, shape, or form. And, you know, I, I really look at, like, the younger guys, uh, like Cunning, he's come a long way since he's gotten here, and he's really worked on his craft and, you know, working on different elements of his game. And, you know, it's, it's tremendous to see him, you know, coming out of the shell on and off the ice. And for a young kid, that's not easy to do, but he's, you know, acclimated himself uh, very quickly mm -hmm. into, you know, what we're doing here. And... You know, Connor McCollum, same thing, you know, young guy that we've really relied upon heavily mm -hmm. and, um, you know, he was hot out of the gate and, you know, we really kind of relied on him from there and, and that's a lot of weight as a, as a young player. So, you know, those are two guys that stick out in my mind, but you can certainly talk about the, you know, like Xavier Abdella and, and ZP and, and Yowser and like what those guys do in the community and, mm -hmm. and for our youth programs and just for our family in general. Um, you know, it just makes me tremendously proud of them and proud to be a part of it. And you know, obviously the, the work that Johnny does yeah. is, is the work that Johnny does. Mm -hmm. It speaks for itself. Um, but you know, it's a, it's a locker room full of 23, 24 leaders in there. And you know, those are five or six that we were able to honor last week. I mean, throughout the year, um, we've touched on exactly what this team has to go through to repeat as champions. It's never been done in the FPHL. We've discussed how your roster decisions will be tested throughout the last couple of months and now into the playoffs with just a surplus right now of guys, some who have stepped up big in the beginning of the year, have stuck around while some veteran players, some guys come back from injury, suspension. Now now it's game one of the playoffs and you've got to put together that lineup. Of course, the suspension to Zach Pamelay in two games, I guess, helps you a little bit in terms of bumping somebody up and, and not having to deal with one extra player. But how do you put together a lineup? Is it my best players out there or are you trying to match up specifically with what Motor City's doing in round one? A little bit of both. Um, you know, we, we need to just focus on us and put the best team that we can on the ice. And, you know, we also have an understanding of who we're playing. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we I think we have the edge on them with some speed and some physicality and uh, just a little bit more of a commitment to the defensive side of the puck. Mm -hmm. um, and you know that's the lineup that that we'll try to construct for you know game one here. But you know those guys make make my decisions awfully difficult, yeah. which is uh, a testament to them and their work ethic and what they do for us. And you know I tell those guys I, I had the conversation with a couple guys today, and uh, you know I said you're not going to like what I have to tell you, but this is the decision that I have to make. And you know love you guys for being a part of this mm -hmm. and be ready for the opportunity when it comes your way because. If, if we're going to go as deep as, as we want to and as we expect to, you know, we're going to need everybody here. And even if they're not in a game one, we're going to have to rely on everyone at some point. So, you know, those guys have done a tremendous job all year and we just have to continue to do it and enjoy the process here for another three weeks. What's the message to a young guy like Colby Johnson who brings a lot of energy, physicality, has been spotlighted a little bit by the league? He's only played five games. He qualified for the playoffs by getting to five games, had been suspended previously. What's the message to a guy like him and even some of the younger guys keeping your cool in a playoff game where everything is magnified? 
Yeah, I mean, certainly in, in playoff hockey, you, you, you know, you have to play with physicality mm -hmm. and, and some jam and, you know, you got to put yourself in, in hard areas to do that, but you also have to be able to control your emotions and just play, play with the course of the game and, and dictate the game, uh, whether our emotions are high or we're kind of even keel. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we're going to have to be ready for everything. We're going to have to be ready to defend. We're going to have to be ready to kill penalties. You know, somebody might have to fight out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're going to have to do what we have to do in the moment to, to be disciplined and, and stick up for who we are and, and play for our team. But obviously the focus is just scoring goals and, and keeping the puck out of your net. So we have to dictate the game in, in all areas of it. And it really starts between our ears. Um, so if our minds are on, we're able to control our emotions and we're able to manage the game accordingly. Friday night, 7.30, here at the Danbury Ice Arena. What do you expect from the Danbury faithful during game one? Uh, I, Doug, I got chills just like, just hearing those words mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be passionate, that's for sure. It's gonna be loud, it's, it's gonna be exciting, energetic. Uh, I, I can't wait to see what these guys come up with and uh, you know, Danbury hockey in the playoffs is is a different element at the Danbury Ice Arena. So, honored to be a part of it and uh, excited to get to work it. You can purchase your tickets on DanburyHatricks.com. 7:30 tomorrow is Game One, Game Two, and Game Three, if necessary, are Saturday and Sunday in Motor City. Final question: It's a fill in the blank playoff edition. We'll only go round by round here because we want to keep it focused on Motor City in round one, but your squad gets the job done and advances to round two if? If we can play discipline hockey, win the specialty teams games, uh, and then beat them in five on five. So the hat trick's trying to advance to the second round of the playoffs. They host Motor City on Friday. We really hope to see you there, and let's do it.